G'day folks. Welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore with you from the Learn to Paint Academy and welcome to this week's episode. Got a great little episode for you this week, a little subject. Um, I was out on a plain air painting 30 day challenge last year, last May, and I was out in the Kenilworth Valley, uh, Sunshine Coast hinterland, and just was trying to paint this, but the sun was setting too quickly. So I snapped off a photo and I thought that's gonna make a great little subject for us to paint. So as always, we'll be using the more method of painting, um, three colors, but uh, essentially three brushes and the three steps just to simplify it right down. If you're new to our program, you know, we've taught this method, the more method of painting to more than 25,000 students around the world right now. And, and they've got some great results from it. And I'm sure you will too. So let's get underway. Okay. So as always with the more method of painting, we're going to start with step one. Step one is our drawing step which is all about placing the big shapes of the, of the painting onto the canvas in the right place. So I've got a 16 inch by 20 inch canvas. And for our drawing, I'm gonna use two of our primary colors, our French ultramarine blue or ultramarine blue and permanent alizarin crimson. If we analyze this photo, you'll see that we've got this very definite horizon line that runs right through there. That's going to be our starting point. We'll get that mapped in first. And then you'll notice that the trees come just a little bit over halfway. So we've got this nice big shape of dark right through here. And we will treat that as one big shape mostly. Okay. Um, and then we'll, so we've got, you know, basically all this foreground area is one shape. We've got these trees here as a second shape. We've got these distant trees and a little mountain. That's the third shape. And then we've got our sky is going to be our fourth shape. So we're simplifying it right down to the most basic four shapes. Let us get underway. I'm going to dip my uh, brush into a little bit of water and these two paints are trying to get together already. So we'll just help them out. We'll mix up a dark. Okay. And this is for our drawing step. We guess, you know, combination of the blue and the red will give us a nice dark, but we want that paint to be quite thin and loose because this is a drawing. We're just placing a few shapes in here. We don't want this to come through too strongly. Uh, so a fair bit of water there. Foreground is running around about a quarter of the way up there. Um, so that's pretty easy to do, right? And then from there, we've got this mass of dark. So it sort of comes out there and then it comes down there and they've got all these sort of tree trunks and things. There's one big tree trunk that's, or one big tree row that's coming through there. And then we've got another one that is running there. Okay. somewhere there and on the other side of that big tree it, it, it sort of there's some dark there and then there's another trunk and some other branches well, I'm not going to put those in just yet um, we will add those in okay as we go from there we have a shadow and this we don't necessarily need to put the shadow in at this stage but I'll just show you we've got this beautiful shadow there there's another one there um, from the setting sun in the distance. And so you can see we're, this is already coming together and taking shape. What we need to do now is just have a look at this. We've got this path that, or the road really, that runs kind of like that. And then there's in shadow, a whole lot of bushes there. And then we've got this row of middle distance trees. Okay, make one up a little bit bigger over there. And behind that, we've got the Kenilworth Bluff. Okay, let's do step two now. Now step two is where we start to block in color into these big shapes that we've already mapped out on our canvas. Our idea here is to set up our, our darkest darks and, and then progressively back to our lights and uh, get our value structure set up and understand you know, warm and cool temperatures and where they're going to go. So our darkest dark is clearly these tree trunks, the reflections, and this main cluster of trees here. So that's what we're gonna start off with and then we'll work progressively back from there. And I've run out of permanent crimson, so I've just popped some magenta up there. It doesn't matter. We'll just get those two together. Make sure it doesn't all fall off the... Now, obviously, when you do this, you won't have yours up on a board like this. Please don't do that, okay? Um, I'm only doing that just for the purpose of the filming. We've got a little touch of the yellow ochre in there. Not too much. It's a little on the purple side, which is why I'm putting the yellow ochre in there. Okay. That will just tone it back a bit. And 
something like that. Now you can see I've got a lot of paint there. It is going to look a bit purple, so let's just have a look. Oh no, it's not too bad up on the canvas. Um, maybe a touch more yellow ochre. And my paint's gone a bit clammy, so you can see they're sort of clumping together a bit there. That's okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to scrub this dark in here and um, just mass it in. That's all we're doing. We're not trying to paint trees or anything at this stage. Although you can see because I'm scrubbing it in like that, I can get some nice little edges and things there. But don't be too fussed about it at this stage. All I want to do is just get the right temperature and value into the right shape. Now, I know there's going to be gum trees, so we'll, we'll lose those for the moment, except for the top of that one. That's going to come down there. Okay. It's roughly the same value, so I'm just going to paint that out. Let us bring that shadow down into there, like so. That's for this main gum tree here, and then there's another one that's sort of running in through there. And we then have all this side of the foliage on this side of this road, and pretty much the road as well, uh, is in shadow. And it's fairly much the same value. So I'll just treat it as one value. There is a slight difference there. However, for the sake of, um, you know, if you're just beginning, I'll treat it as all the same value, just to simplify it. Okay. I'll run that up to the road there. So it's just a you know, cluster of bushes and things along, runs alongside of that road. And um, it's all in shadow. Okay. So we've got a bit of field in here and we've got a bit of field out the back there. I'll just give that brush a slight clean. So with our field, I'm going to go an orange tone. So, whoop. Get those two together. Now there is a fair bit of shadow, so I'm just going to work out the bits I don't do with this orange tone is, is where the shadow is going to be. So I'll run that. So the, these are the the highlighted parts where the sunlight's catching in the grass. Are the bits that I'm currently doing the underpainting for. Okay. And up in here, it runs kind of like there. So the sunlight's catching in here. And these grasses. And that's good. That'll give us a chance to put some nice punchy greens, um, nice warmth in there. And it'll interplay against these darks just nicely. Okay. So we'll run that into there. And that means that up in here, we've got this shadow still I'll go a little touch bluer just to cool that down a bit get a touch of water into that in there. It's just a row of trees, like so. One taller one. And uh, that should work well. Okay, so it needs to look like it's further off in the distance. These warmer colours should be coming more forward and um, this bluey grey should be disappearing into the distance there. Got a little bit of a mountain ridge there, which is the Kenilworth Bluff. I'll put more white, more blue okay, into that. Okay, and I'll run that in just there. So we're making good progress on step two here, our blocking step. Normally what we would do is block in our sky as well. Sky is a pretty important part of this um, because we get that glowing effect behind those darks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to do the sky as part of step three because there's not a lot to do in terms of detailing this up. Um, most of it's in silhouette. There's not a lot of detail there. Uh, but the sky, I think, is a pretty important part. So I don't want to get my colors dirty 
with wet paint already up there. So if I take a break now and I treat the sky as part of step three, then that'll be bone dry and I can work my sky in as the first thing we do in step three. So I'm gonna take a break. We'll let this settle down and I'll see you back when this is dry and uh, we'll start to pull it all together and I'm pretty confident it's gonna look like a great little painting there. So I'll see you after the break. Okay, welcome back folks. We let this dry off. We're now gonna go and do step three of the more method, which is of course where we start to detail, do our finishing touches, our highlights, etc. And as we said, we will come in and we'll do this sky here. So I'll do that now. And then I can work my darks back in around that sky. I take some of this white here and I'm going to just use this yellow ochre, which is a nice sort of sunlight tone. Okay, and I'm going to punch it up a bit. And not too much water on the brush now because we're not going to come back in and do, you know, a number of passes of our sky. We're just going to do one pass. And I'll just, I need to just reduce the size of that. Can work bluff there, so I'll work around that. And let's just get this sunlight tone in here. If I lose some of those dark edges, I can put them back in, that's no problem. Okay. Just bring the, I just felt that the size of that mountain was a little bit too big there. And uh, that's looking a bit better there now. Okay. Remember that's way off in the distance. And along this treetop here, we'll work that in. So these trees also are silhouetted against that sunlight color. Okay. Whoop. More white in there. And start to bring it down there as well, down along the side of these trees. Now, if I make the trees a little bit thinner at this stage, I'm okay with that because I'm going to come back in with that dark anyway. So we'll work back into that. I'll lose that little bit of foliage that I put in there. I don't mind losing that okay now let's get a little bit more of this in here and now what i'll do i'll give that brush a little bit of a swish in some water pour through some paper towel not completely cleaning it but enough get some more of that white and now get some of this blue on its own i want it to be a nice light blue mix that we've got there okay and that little bit of yellow in the brush is just starting to dirty that up a little which is good. Pinhead of water, and I'll just start at the top there. Notice I'm not going straight into that yellow, I'm working up to it. Okay. Now you may have seen me do this in other videos, but it's always good just to work up to it initially. And I'll probably have, I don't want any space up there, but we'll get a little bit of that happening in there as well. Okay. And then I'll pull the paint out of the brush with the paper towel. And where I've got these areas that intersect, I'll just lightly feather them together. Okay. Pull that blue down into the yellow, and we'll pull that yellow up into the blue a bit. Okay. Blue and the red again. I've gone out and bought some more permanent crimson during the break. You may remember I added a bit of magenta in there. But I went out for a coffee break and picked up some more uh, permanent crimson. Now, before we used a bit of water, now I'm not going to. I'm going to use a thicker paint in here because we want to start building up the layers. Okay. Now, just be careful with that wet paint when you push up into that wet paint because what will happen is um, you'll pick up some of that on the end of the brush and that will dilute the strength of that dark, so just be mindful of that. We don't want that dark to start to get too thin and or too light in value, just because we weren't paying enough attention. Okay. And we just start building it up. Just push it up. 
pushing out into those edges there. I'll try and leave the edges to last. Um, so good, good practice is to not push out the edges too early because as I said, you'll get too light a tone on your brush and uh, you'll have to clone it constantly. You can avoid that area, then make your life a little bit easier. Okay, get some more of that paint. Whoop, must have swiped through the light there. So it's so important to be aware of what's going on. In this case, it's probably not going to matter too much. So it's not looking too bad there. A little bit more of this blue and red. Okay, so now I'll just give that brush a slight clean. I'll dry it off. Get some more of this paint here. Okay, and now I'll come to these edges and I'll just very lightly just soften them out. Let the brush do the work. I'm hardly putting any pressure on there at all. And um, the brush will do the work if you just Keep it moving. Take that yellow ochre there. We'll get this blue. We'll mix those two together. Get more yellow ochre. So I want a green. It's probably not quite as punchy as I'd like. So I will I'll add our booster colour now, our cadmium yellow light, which we quite often add. Okay. I don't want a touch of this though because I want to create a tone throughout the back. So I'll just get a little touch of that for now. And that looks good. I'll add a pinhead of white. Trying to pick up that yellow ochre with that any of the red. Okay, that's probably getting close. Now what we're going to use this for, we've got the, there's some grasses out in this field out here. So I'll just add those in. And they pick through. Okay, something like that. Let's just test that. Well, in fact, let's just block this in here with that, so that we know we've got it right. So a row of trees out in the distance. Like so. And then we'll take that tone and we'll just work it in lightly in through here so that we looking through the tree trunks and so on, which we will add in. Get that in there. So what I think will push this up now is going to be getting in our um, foreground grasses. We'll get a little bit of a punchier tone in there. So I started mixing green here We'll add a little bit more blue and we'll get all of this yellow here. Let's just get that. Probably too much of the blue. A little bit more of the cadmium yellow there.
Okay, so we want a fairly punchy, warm, green grass tone. And then let's just get some of that in. And then just flick up in a few spots. Don't overdo the flicking. Um, but just to overlap that shadow. Okay, and then vary it up a little bit. I like I'll get a bit more yellow ochre into part of it there. So we're really starting to punch up the um, and accentuate that um, foreground grasses there. Flick a few of them up over the edges, try to create a hard edge with that shadow there. It's a good thing. Okay, I'm gonna use my little rigger brush. I'm going to take this blue and this red and we're just going to well, just mix it where it is, get back to that dark. Okay. A bit of water on this now and let's just run in some tree trunk indications here. Try and avoid painting this too uniform. Okay, it needs to be a little bit random, a little bit chaotic in some ways. Not chaotic, but you know what I mean. If you have a neat little line of evenly spaced tree trunks, it won't quite work. Okay, so I think we've got that looking good. Let's mix up a little bit more of this paint here and I'll just start to put in a little bit of form into this tree. Got a touch redder, pull in a little bit more of that red. So keep in mind, these are just little silhouettes, aren't they? We're not painting the whole tree here. And um, if you're painting silhouettes, it becomes as much about getting the right shape and so on, I think. Sky colour into our, you know, the, that sun colour, setting sun colour into our sky, but it needs to break through the trees a bit more than what we've allowed it. So now we get a bit of yellow ochre and now some cadmium yellow. Don't make it too punchy, but a little punchy. Like so, a little bit more white. Out. Well, I've got too much paint in the brush, so I'll pull some of that off and I'll just load the tip here and I'm just going to pull out, especially around the edges of this tree, because that dark of the tree is going to make the light behind it look even brighter. So that means we have to accentuate that light.
so. And now we start to work into the tree a little bit. Now I'm working on the other side of that trunk there. And of course in this mass of trees here, there are spots, you know, in terminally here where the light is coming through. coming through down in here, down in through the, these trunks here, um, but I think we're right, but just on yours, just know that if you've lost a bit of your foliage as a result of putting those sun spots in, then just pop that foliage, just very gently back in, and uh, the painting will look better for it more of these tree trunks and things. A few branches in there. Well folks, I think we're going to leave this one there. It's been an interesting subject. I really enjoy doing it because it's a little bit different with the backlighting and then the silhouetted trees and so on and uh, a fun little project and it's a, a way to try some new ideas and some new things into your painting. I particularly like backlit subjects and um, we haven't really done one on Learn to Paint TV I don't think for a while so I thought it'd be worth having a go at and uh, there's a lot more you could do in this obviously. You could take a lot more time and detail. You know I've sort of been doing it as a demonstration so it's a little touch rush but you get the idea and the important thing is we use the more method of painting three steps. We used our drawing step we identified a handful of big shapes. We blocked in, a little bit different from normal because we didn't block in our sky initially. And then in the third step we've come in and we've started to pull the paint together. There's been details, highlights, finishing touches, and of course the sky in this particular, uh, in this particular case. Normally we'd do the sky in step two, but it's been a lot of fun. Have a go at it and uh, be patient with it because you have to get the right balance of lights to darks. And that may not happen in your first pass, you know, so there are things I can see already that I could work back in and, and just improve on. And um, if you've got more time than what we allow for these demonstration paintings, then I'd suggest that you do take that time and really just get the right balance between darks and lights there. But overall, I'm, I'm happy with it as a demonstration painting. And it demonstrates to you the, you know, the key principles of the more method of painting, but how to do backlit subjects. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure you check out all the other episodes of Learn to Paint TV. I'll put the web address underneath me and in the description. So it's www.learntopaint.tv. But more importantly, drop by the Learn to Paint Academy and register for the free course that we have for you. And that is at www.learntopaint.academy. Again, web address underneath me and in the description. Um, so go and check that out, register for the free course, and I'll go through all these ideas and concepts in a lot more detail. And we do, I think, three or four different demonstration paintings for you so that you can really learn how to paint with the more method of painting. And I know you're going to love it. Um, 25,000 students have already come through the Learn to Paint Academy, so come and join us. Um, I'll see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers. Cheers.